So for this first one here, we've got a ratio of lengths, which is what? 20 to 28. Now I am going to reduce that to make life easier on me. I'm going to divide those by 4. 5 over 7. So then for my ratio of areas, what am I going to do to that 5 over 7? Square it, which is going to give me 25 over 49. So where's my 680 here? It goes with the 20. This is the 20, so it stays on top. So 49 times 680 divided by 25. Thirteen thirty-two point eight. How many of you got that? Cool. What's our ratio of links over here? Eight over fourteen, which of course can be reduced by. Is 4 over 7. To turn that into a ratio of volumes now, what do we do? Cubit. So it's going to be third power. 4 cubed is 64, and 7 cubed is 343. Where does the 1024 go? Tap. Because that's in the figure with the 8, so it stays on top. So we shall cross, multiply, and divide. 343 times 1024 divided by 64. 5488. How many had a volume of 5,488 cubic feet? Okay. Any questions on those? Okay. Well, that's good news. I'll make sure it's on the recording here for you, too. So that's the extra credit question to copy down for the back of your quiz. So what we're going to look at now for the last few minutes of today is we're going to get started on hip roofs. What a hip roof is, is rather than your standard gable roof, like this end here, this is a gable end of a roof. You see how it comes out to a, you know, a flat end wall, and you've got that triangle there in the end of the house. Well, a hip roof is like this, where instead of coming out to a triangle, the roof is cut off and it slopes down. Just like it slopes down on the sides of the house, it slopes down on the end of the house, too. So you got this funny corner, and you can see you got all this weird framing that has to go on in here. So what we're going to talk about is this framing in here and how that all has to happen. Now this gets to be a little tough because we're trying to take something three-dimensional and draw it out on a two-dimensional paper. So the view we're going to be looking at is most often going to look something like this. Where you're, we're going to be looking at straight it from above. So you're going to be seeing it from above. So we're going to be looking at this is going to be the ridge beam. Then we're going to see the, the hip rafters, or sometimes called the corner rafters, but just the hip rafters coming down. Then these coming down. So you got to realize that this point is actually sticking out at you instead of being flat on the paper. So if we're looking at this, stay. This is over here. From above, this is the end of our house. And let's say we've got a span here of, oh, let's go with an easy 36 feet to deal with. <clears throat> So this here is our ridge beam here, and then these are the hip corners going down to the corners of the house so that we got that sloped surface there. So remember, this point right here is really sticking out at you. It's not flat down on the paper. So what we're going to look at today is something called a conventional hip. A conventional hip means the slope of all three of those surfaces is the same. So if this is a 612 slope, this is a 612 slope. Now those two will typically usually be the same anyway. 
but then the hip end is also a 612 slope. This is called the main roof. And of course, this part over here is the hip roof. When dealing with a hip roof, we always are going to have to start out with the common rafters. And that's in the main roof. So that common rafter is going to look something like that. If it's going to be, you know, again, this peak is sticking up at us. So it's, I'm just going to draw it like right now for just like that. So it's going across there. Remember, there is a peak here that sticks up at us. So looking at that from the side, from this direction, that common rafter is going to look something like this. Only not all crooked and messed up, hopefully. 36 feet here and a 612 slope. So step one is always going to be to find the length of the common rafter. That is this piece right here. To find that, of course, what's the first thing we got to find? The height. So we find height. Of course, to find height, we need to know that this is how much? 18, half the span. So we've got 6 over 12 equals h over 18. If we cross, multiply, and divide, h must be 9. <coughs> so that means the length of my common rafter is going to be the square root of 9 squared plus 18 squared. Twenty one point one two five. Now I'm going to leave that in decimal feet for right now. I'm going to write it in decimal feet, the twenty one point one two five. Um, we can convert that. It should come out to twenty one foot one and a half inch is what it's going to come out to be when we convert it down. But we will convert that. Eh, what the heck? We can convert it down. Why not? So I'm going to subtract the 20, that's 20 feet, times 12, gives us 1 inch, subtract the 1, times 16 should give us 7.92, which is 8 sixteenths or 1 half inch. We've got 20 feet, 1 and a half inch. <clears throat> That's all we need to do on the common rafter side, is find the length of the common for a conventional hip. So now on the hip roof side, The length of the longest hip jack is going to equal the length of the common. So this right here is going to be 20. Why did I write down 21 there? Should this have been 21? Or was it 20? I wrote down 21 up here accidentally. Okay, that should be 20. Correct that. So this is 20.125. This should be 22. So that's 20.125 feet. I'm going to leave it as decimal feet for right now. I know that it's 20 foot, one and a half inch. So I can come back to that when I need to. 
Now, at any point in this process, kind of as an aside, I can find the length of the hip rack. Now, here's the problem with this. The triangle, there are so many triangles here. And they're all, you know, some of them standing up, some of them are flat, whatever. What we're going to look at right now is this triangle right here. We know that this is 20.125 feet. We know that this is 18 feet. Where did I get that 18 from? Half of the span, 36. Very good. So this is just going to be 20.125 squared plus 18 squared. So it's going to be 27 feet, almost to the on the dot. It's 27.0003, which is going to come out to be 27 feet and 0 16. So 27 feet. So that is our hip corner. Or our hip rafter, if you want to call it that. I'm just used to calling it the hip corner because people don't realize it's in the, the corner rafter of the hip. The other thing we can find is the setback. The setback is the distance from the end of the house to the end of the ridge beam. That's the setback. Since this is a conventional hip, and the slopes are the same, the setback's half the span, so that's going to be 18 feet. So then the final thing we can find, this is going back in blue because this goes with step one, is the jack rafter decrease. Decrease in jack rafters. See, one of the quirks about these things is, okay, this is my longest jack right here, right? Well, this one here is this much shorter. Well, the quirk is this next one's going to be the same amount shorter. So once I know the difference between this first one and the second one, it's that same difference between all of them, all the way down, until I get to one that's too short to install. Generally, if it's less than three feet, we don't put it in. But it all depends on who you're working with, too. Some standards, some people want a little ones in there just so there's no soft spots in the corner of the roof. So Depend Part of it depends on your overhang. If you have a longer overhang, you'll put in the shorter jacks just to support the overhang. So how do we find that jack rafter decrease? Well, we're going to use this triangle here again. Remember where that came from. That came from right there. So we're going to use that triangle again. It has dimensions of 18 here. And 20.125 here. Next, we're going to use this triangle. What is that triangle for? That's for our next jack, which would be right here. Right? Really, it's this triangle here. I just drew it in down there because I didn't want to scroll up. So what we have here, this length right here is going to be what? Yeah, assuming we're going two foot on center, Yeah, assuming that we're going two feet on center, it'd be two foot less, so it'd be 16 feet. So I'm going to make this here is going to be X. That's going to be the length of my next rafter, next jack. So 18 relates to 16 as 20.125 relates to X. So 
we take 16 times 20.125 divided by 18. 17.889 feet. Now that I'm going to convert that one again. So that's 17 feet. Let's subtract the 17. Times what? 12. Make it inches. That's 10 inches. Then what? That's 10. Subtract the 10. Times 16, which is going to give us 10.6, so it's going to round up to 11 sixteenths, right? Inches. So that's the length of my next, that's the length of the second jack. Does that make sense? So to find my decrease, I have the 20 foot one and a half. I'm going to write one half inch as 8 sixteenths. Why am I going to write it as 8 sixteenths? It's 11 sixteenths. Right, we are going to subtract. Now, remember three weeks ago when we went back and reviewed adding and subtracting measurements? Here's why. And this one's kind of ugly. 8 minus 11 can't be done, so we're going to borrow from the 1 to make it a 0. What's this become? Don't say 18. You add the denominator to it always, right? Because you took one, it's 16 pieces of the denominator. So it's 24 minus 11 is 13 sixteenths. Now we've got to borrow. This is going to be 19. This is going to be 12 inches. 12 minus 10, 2 inches. 19 minus 7, is two feet. So two feet, two and thirteen sixteenths inches is the jack raft for decrease. So what that means is, so you've got, this is the longest one, this is the first one, this is the second one. To get the third one, take the 17, 10, 11, 16, minus 2, 2, 13. Now there's going to be some borrowing involved again. This is going to be 9. This is going to be 27. 16 plus 11 is 27. We subtract 14 sixteenths, otherwise known as 7 eighths. 9 minus 2 is 7 and 15. Now notice I wrote the 14 sixteenths there because when I go to do the next step, I'm going to put it back as 14 sixteenths. So I can subtract easier. So it can find the length of all those jacks down to where I get till it's too short to, to be useful anymore. What do you think? There's a lot of steps. But you do want to know uh, how many feet out of center they are. Is that yes. Usually, uh, Very good question. Are you normally going to have that information available? You have to. If you don't know, you can't do it. So let me, uh, find the homework for us here. Um, in the packet we've got here, it also shows you the cheater on the framing square, by the way. This was a, a 612 roof. If you look on the framing square, 612, hip valley, two foot on center. This was a 612, right? It says 26 and 13 sixteenths. So we had 26 and 13 sixteenths is our difference here. Two foot two and 13 is our difference. That's on page 281, by the way. It shows you the framing square. If you looked at the six, it should be the fourth line down. It would be the hip valley, two foot on center. Okay. So homework for you guys. What I want you to do 
on page 282 through 283 in this pack. We see there's problem number one there. For problem number one, they're giving you, like for A, they're giving you actually the length of the common rafter. And then the run of the common rafter, which is your 12 feet, right? So they're giving you, theirs they're giving you, oops, they're giving you this common rafter length. They're saying, what, that's 13 feet. And they're telling you that this distance is 12 feet. So the span is 24. They're giving the run of the common is always half the span, right? So from that information, I want you to find one. For, for each of those, I want you to find length of the, the hip rafter, the corner rafter. And I want you to find... the jack rafter decrease. So that's all I want you to find. That's just problem number one. There's A, B, C, D, and E. I'll let you guys have your last three minutes to take a look at it, see if there's any notes you need. And then that's it for us for the day.